Hello, karibu endelee kujifunza na hapa tunaendelea na somo la 18, lesson 18. Na hili somo la 18 ni mwendelezo wa somo hili kwa sababu tayari tumeshaona sehemu ya kwanza, yani part 1 katika somo la 17 na hapa tunaendelea na part 2. Na somo letu hili linahusu matumizi ya I, you, he, she, it, we pamoja na they katika sentensi mbalimbali za Kiingereza. Na sehemu ya kwanza tuliona matumizi ya I we you pamoja na they lakini katika part 2 tutaona matumizi ya he she pamoja na it pia tutaona wapi ambapo unaweza kaongeza es katika maneno ambayo yanaenda pamoja na he she na it katika sentensi lakini pia tutaangalia ni wapi ambapo unaweza kubadili y kwenda kwenye ies katika sentensi au katika vitendo au maneno ambayo yanaenda yanaenda pamoja na she na it katika lakini pia tunapia ambapo tunaweza kaongeza s peke yake katika sentensi za Kiingereza hasa katika maneno yanayofuatana na he she pamoja na mwisho tutaangalia matumizi ya does pamoja na doesn't katika sentensi za Kiingereza zikiambatana na yake haya maneno yakiambatana na he she pamoja na it katika sentensi na haya maneno mawili tutayaona kwa upande wa kuuliza na kujibu maswali katika sentensi za Kiingereza Asa tuanze moja kwa moja na kipengele hiki cha pili. Tuanze moja kwa moja na kipengele tulicho nacho katika somo la 18. Jambo la msingi ni umakini. Kama kipengele cha kwanza cha somo la 17 ulikielewa vizuri basi hapa nadhani hakutakuwa na shida yoyote. Utaelewa vizuri pia. I Utakumbuka ilikuwa na maanisha mimi. You na maanisha wewe au nyinyi. He inamaanisha yeye wa kiume. She inamaanisha yeye wa kike. It inamaanisha yeye pamoja na vitu vyote yani wanyama, yeye kama ni mnyama na vitu vyote ambavyo si binadamu. Lakini kwa kitu kimoja, we inamaanisha sisi. Lakini they inamaanisha wao. Sasa Tunde moja kwa moja kwenye part 2. Na part 2 kama nilivyosema inahusu matumizi ya he, matumizi ya she pamoja na matumizi ya it. Lakini katika matumizi ya haya maneno kuna vitendo ambavyo katika sentensi za kawaida za Kiingereza kama ambazo tumekuwa tukiona kwa mfano sentence kama I go. Tutaangalia ni, ni kwa nini kwenye she imekuwa goes badala ya she go kwa sababu tunaona kuna maneno ma, kuna kuna hizi herufi mbili hizi ambazo zina nyeusi iliyokolea es imeongezeka kwenye hili neno go kwa kawaida hapo ungekuta kuna i alafu hapa kuna go i go ninakwenda sasa tuone kwa nini hapa tumeweka she goes kuna kanuni ya kuzingatia katika mabadiliko ya yanayosababisha uongeze es katika kitendo ambacho kinaenda pamoja na hii, she pamoja na it. Pale ambapo kitendo kinaishia na o au kinaishia na sh au kinaishia na ch au kinaishia na x au kinaishia z au kinaishia double s yani manaki s mbili hicho kitendo utakiongezea herufi mbili e pamoja na s mwishoni kama tutakavyoona katika hii mifano tuliyonayo kwa hiyo kumbuka neno likishia o likishia sh lakini kiwe kitendo sio neno lolote tu litakalofuatana na she pamoja na na, na 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 hii na it ila ni kitendo kwa hiyo kitendo kitakachoishia o kitakacho kitakachoishia sh kitakachoishia ch kitakachoishia x kitakachoishia z na kitakachoishia double s kalili hivi vipengele ndicho kitendo utakachokiongezea es kwa maneno peke yake yanayoishia na hivi vitu tulivyoona o ch sh ch x z pamoja na double s ndio tu utakayoongezea es mwishoni tuangalie moja kwa moja kwenye mifano nini kimefanyika kwa kufuata hayo maelezo niliyotoa hapo juu. Tuanze na mfano wa kwanza. 
ambao ni huu hapa she goes she goes to his office every day she goes to his office every day kwa mfano hapa tungetoa she goes tukarudi kwenye sentence tulizozoea ningeweza kusema i go to his office every day i go to his office every day inaomaanisha ninakwenda ofisini kwake kwake lakini wa kiume his i go to his office every day nakwenda ofisini kwake kila siku lakini ningekuwa na ofisi ninayoendea ni ya mwanamke ningesema i go to her office every day maana nakwenda ofisini kwake kila siku lakini ofisi ya mwanamke sasa kama unavyoweza kuona hili neno go linaishiwa na o kwa hiyo kanuni yetu inasema kama kitendo kinaishiwa na o hapa taongeza es kwa hiyo she goes she goes to his office every day kwa hiyo vile vile hapa ingekuwa e, hapa kwenye she ungeza kusema he goes au it goes she goes it goes i go we go they go mfano wa pili he does business 24/7 ni 24/7/7 hapa i do business ingemaanisha ninafanya biashara i do business i do business ninafanya biashara lakini he does inamaanisha anafanya kwa sababu do inaishia na o kwa hiyo tunaongeza es He does, she does, it does. Kwa hiyo he does business inamaanisha anafanya biashara lakini wa kiume. He does. Wa kike she does business anafanya biashara. Wa kike au yeye anafanya biashara. Wa kike ni she wa kiume ni hii. Kwa hiyo he does business 24/7 maana yake inamaanisha anafanya biashara saa 24 za siku siku saba za wiki kwa saa 24 siku 7 za wiki ambayo inamaanisha anafanya biashara kila wakati usiku na mchana saa 24 za siku siku 7 za wiki he does business 24/7 twende kwenye mfano mwingine unaofuata mfano unaofuata ni hapa example 3 mfano wa 3 she washes utaona kwamba hapa tumeongeza es kwa sababu kuna sh sh inaishia hiki kitendo cha wash she washes kwa utasema she washes au she does she washes au she does does tayari inaweka kwamba inaishia na ondo sasa tumeongeza es she washes or she does the dishes hasa hapa dishes atakuongeza es kwa sababu ni kitendo ila kwa sababu ni jina na dish kwa sababu inaishia na sh pia katika wingi unaongeza es. Kwa kanuni inakuwa kama hii hii ya kuongeza es kwenye vitendo vinavyofuatana na hii she pamoja na it. She washes or she does the dishes every morning. Every morning inamaanisha kila asubuhi. Kwa she washes the dishes every morning. Anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. Wash the dishes inamaanisha osha vyombo. How do the dishes inamaanisha osha vyombo. Kwa hiyo to do the dishes inamaanisha kuosha vyombo to wash the dishes inamaanisha pia kuosha vyombo. Kwa she washes the dishes every morning anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. She does the dishes every morning anaosha vyombo kila asubuhi. Lakini kama ungekuwa unataka kusema ninaosha vyombo kila asubuhi ungesema I do the dishes every morning au I wash the dishes every morning. Kwa hiyo pale ambapo ungetumia i we you pamoja na they es ungeitoa ikabaki kitendo cha kawaida ambacho ni wash na do kama kanuni inavyosema eh, kwa upande wa es kwamba ni he she na it peke yake ndivyo vitendo vyake vitaongezewa es na si vinginevyo Twende mfano wa example 4 ni hii hapa he teaches he teaches english on youtube He teaches English on YouTube ambayo inamaanisha anafundisha Kiingereza kwenye YouTube ambapo kwa Kiswahili hatuna haja kusema kwenye ile tunasema tu anafundisha Kiingereza YouTube ile kwa Kiingereza utasema on He teaches English on YouTube ambapo teach kwa sababu inaishia na CH 
tunaongeza es kama kanuni inavyosema kwamba ni maneno yanayoshe na o s h c h x z na double s utaongezea es kwa hiyo he teaches english on youtube na maana anafundisha kiingereza youtube lakini wa kiume kama angekuwa kiki ungesema she teaches english on youtube lakini ukitaka kusema ninafundisha utasema i teach es inaondoka au kama ukitaka kusema wanafundisha utasema they teach es itaondoka pia twende mfano mwingine example 5 Example 5 inasema he fixes broken computers. He fixes broken computers. Ambayo inamaanisha anatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. Broken computers ni kompyuta mbovu au kompyuta zilizoharibika. Broken computers, kompyuta zilizoharibika. Kama ukitaka kusema labda madirisha yaliyoharibika utasema broken windows. Ukitaka kusema milango iliyoharibika utasema broken doors na kadhalika. Kwa hiyo kama anatengeneza mi, milango mibovu utasema he fixes broken doors. Twende kwenye neno letu la msingi ambalo ni fix. Fix inaongezewa es fixes. Fixes. Fixes he fixes. Ingekuwa kama ni ninatengeneza ungesema i fix. I fix. Ninatengeneza i fix broken computers. Ninatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. They fix broken computers. Wanatengeneza kompyuta mbovu. Lakini kwa sababu hapa kuna hii ndio sababu tunaongeza ES hapo mbele. Twende neno lingine au mfano mwingine namba sita. Example 6. It buzzes just like a bee. It buzzes just like a bee. It buzzes just like, like a bee. Buzz inamaanisha kutoa kisauti kidogo ambacho kina kinakuwa ni kama kile cha cha nyuki nyuki ambayo ni b kwa kama unajua ile sauti ya nyuki ndio hiyo buzz kwa hiyo it buzzes inamaanisha anatoa sauti kama ya nyuki ila just like a b inamaanisha kama nyuki kama nyuki tu it buzzes just like a b anatoa kisauti kidogo kile ambacho kinakuwa kina muendelezo kama nyuki tu it buzzes just like a b lakini pia kitu cha msingi ni kwamba hapa pote ulipoona tunatumia tunatumia it, tunatumia he, tunatumia she, tunatumia he, she. Hapo unaweza kuweka majina ya watu na vitu. Kwa hiyo kwenye hii unaweza kuweka jina la kiume, kwenye she unaweza kuweka jina la kike, kwenye it unaweza kuweka jina la kitu chochote ikiwemo wanyama. Kwa hiyo hapa kwenye it unaweza kuweka mdudu yeyote ambaye anatoa sauti kama ya nyuki. Twende mfano wa mfano wa mwisho sasa kwa kipengele hiki hapa cha kuongeza ES ni mfano namba saba. Mfano namba saba au example seven. Example seven inasema she misses her family so much. She misses her family so much. She misses her family so much inamaanisha ana miss familia yake sana. Her family her family familia yake lakini wa kike his family familia yake lakini wa kiume so much sana miss hapa kuna double s ndio sababu za es kama ambavyo hapa kuna z tumeongeza es kwa sababu kuna it ndivyo ambavyo pia hapa es imeongezeka kwa sababu ya double s kwenye miss she misses her family so much ana miss familia yake sana lakini pia Kumbuka ingekuwa unataka kusema nina i miss family yangu sana ungesema i miss my family so much usingesema i misses wala usingesema they misses wala usingesema you misses ungesema you miss they miss we miss lakini she misses her family she misses her family he misses her family na kadhalika kwa hii she na it ndio zitacheza na hii hapa ongezeko la es kwa hiyo kama umekuwa makini umeona kwamba maneno yale yote ambayo tumesema kwa maana ya na yanatakiwa ongezewe es. Tumeona vile yanavyoishia. Tumeona double s, tumeona double tumeona hapo z ambapo kuna double z, tumeona x. Tumeona pia ambapo naishia ch mali ambapo naishia sh mali inapoishia o. Ande katika kitu kingine kinachotakiwa kufanyika unatumia hii shi pamoja na it. Kuna mabadiliko mengine pia natakiwa yafanye katika vitendo ambavyo vina, vinaenda pamoja na hii na she pamoja na it. 
mahali ambapo utakuta neno neno linaishia na hiki kifuatacho mahali ambapo utakuta neno linaishia na consonant afu imemalizikia na y yani consonant kujumlisha y consonant ni herufi nyingine yoyote tofauti na a e i o u kwa hiyo herufi nyingine zote tofauti na a e i o u ndizo uzi ujue kwamba ni consonant au katika akili yako weki kwamba consonant ni herufi nyingine zozote tofauti na a e i o u kwa hiyo neno ambalo litakuwa linaishia na herufi tofauti na a e i o u afu likifuatiwa na y hilo neno utaondoa ile y utaweka i afu utaongeza es kwa itakuwa i es badala ya y kama utakavyoona katika mifano lakini kanuni hii ya mabadiliko iwe tu pale utakapotumia hii shi au it yani jina la kitu kimoja au jina la mtu mmoja awe wa kike au wa kiume sasa tuangalie hayo mabadiliko kupitia mfano wa kwanza she always cries for no reason she always cries for no reason ambayo inamaanisha mara zote au wakati wote huwa analia bila sababu for no reason inamaanisha bila sababu au wakati mwingine utasikia for no good reason au for no reason at all yote hiyo inamaanisha bila sababu bila sababu kwa for no reason bila sababu lakini hapa cries imetokana na neno cry kwa mfano i cry ninalia they cry wanalia lakini she cries she cries analia kwa hiyo pale kwenye y tumetoa y tumeongeza i e s kwa sababu hili hiki kitendo kimeenda pamoja na she she cries she cries she always cries for no reason she cries for no reason analia bila sababu she always cries for no reason wakati wote au mara zote analia bila sababu kwa hapa pia hata kwenye she ungeitoa ungeweka he cries for no reason au he always cries for no reason pia ungeweza kuweka jina la mtu kwa mfano hapa Deborah always cries for no reason Jane always cries for no reason na kadhalika twende katika mfano wetu wa pili mfano wetu wa pili hapa ni wapa he tries to do everything possible to help his son sometimes he prays for his son hapa tries imetokana na try kwa i try ninajaribu you try unajaribu kwa hiyo he tries he tries anajaribu au wengine wanasema yeye hujaribu he tries to do everything possible to do everything possible inamaanisha kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana he tries to do everything possible inamaanisha anajaribu kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana to help his son to help kusaidia his son mwanae wa kiume lakini his hapa inamaanisha yani huyu ni son ni mtoto wa kiume wa mwanaume angekuwa hasan angekuwa mwanae wa kiume lakini huyo ambaye anazungumziwa kuhusu mwana ni wa kike manake atakuwa ni mama wa mtoto hasan mwanae wa kiume lakini akiwa ni mama his son mwanae wa kiume akiwa ni baba kwa he tries to to do everything possible to help his son anajaribu kufanya kila kinachowezekana au kufanya kila kitu kinachowezekana kumsaidia mwanae wa kiume sometimes wakati mwingine he prays anasali au anaomba he prays for his son sometimes he prays for his son wakati mwingine anaomba kwa ajili ya mwanae wa kiume lakini anaomba ni nani wa kiume he prays for his son hapa try hii neno try limebadilika kuwa tries ambapo tumeongeza ies lakini kuna neno pray limeishia na y kama tunavyoona lakini tumeongeza s peke yake badala ya kutoa y tukaweka ies kwa sababu gani y imetanguliwa na a au a na tumesema mahali ambapo ita, y itatanguliwa na a a e o u hatutabadilisha ile y kuwa i e s inabidi itanguliwe na consonant kama hapa tulivyoona y imetanguliwa na r ndio sababu imekuwa i e s kama tulivyoona ku cry imetanguliwa pia na r kwa tunabadilisha y kwenda i e s inakuwa cries hapa try inakuwa tries 
lakini pray inakuwa pray bila kubadilisha y. Y inabaki vile vile kwa sababu imetanguliwa na a. Kwa ni, ni eneo pia ambalo litahitaji umakini hata utakapokutana na maneno mengine yanayofanana na haya. Twende kwenye neno letu lingine ambalo tutalikuta katika mfano wa namba 3. Tuangalie mfano wa namba 3 au example 3. Example 3 hii hapa inasema he flies to the US twice a month. Hili neno flies limetokana na fly. Fly. Kwa hiyo he flies. Tunaona kwamba y imetanguliwa na l ambayo ni consonant. Kwa hiyo tuna uwezo kubadili y kwenda ies ndio sababu he flies to fly inamaanisha kupaa au kusafiri kwa ndege. Kwa hiyo he flies to the US. He flies to the US. Maana anasafiri kwa ndege kwenda Marekani. The US inamaanisha Marekani au kisikia the states au kisikia the United States inamaanisha Marekani. Kwa hiyo he flies to the US twice a month inamaanisha mara mbili kwa mwezi. He flies to the US twice a month. Anasafiri kwa ndege kwenda Marekani mara mbili kwa mwezi. Twende kipengele kingine ambacho ni hiki hapa. Hiki kipengele kinahusu kuongeza s peke yake wala sio kubadilisha y kwenda ies wala sio ku wala sio kuongeza es ni kuongeza s peke yake kama tunavyoona. Tuangalie mfano wetu wa kwanza ambao ni huu hapa. Mfano wetu wa kwanza example 1 inasema she loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. She loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. Kwa hapa tunaona kwamba yale maneno yote ambayo either hayaishina hayaishwi na y ambayo imetanguliwa na consonant au maneno ambayo hayaishwi na o ch sh x z na double s ambazo zina kanuni yake maalum maneno mengine yote aliyobaki itakuwa unaongeza s peke yake kama tunavyoona hapa love imekuwa loves she loves kwa mfano i love you ninakupenda she loves you anakupenda yeye wa kike au he loves you anakupenda yeye wa kiume kwa she loves you anakupenda huyu wa kike anakupenda wewe she loves you that's why that's why inamaanisha ndio maana she wants anataka utakumbuka kwamba kwa kawaida ukitaka kusema ninataka unasema i want bila kuongeza s ila kwa hii she na it utaongeza s she wants anataka he wants anataka yeye wa kiume it wants anataka yeye kama ni mnyama au kinataka kama ni kitu to tell you kukwambia the truth ukweli about kuhusu everything kila kitu she owns anamiliki to own inamaanisha kumiliki kwa mfano i own many things ninamiliki vitu vingi she owns anamiliki kwa hiyo she, she loves you that's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns inamaanisha anakupenda ndio maana anataka kukwambia ukweli kuhusu kila kitu anamiliki lakini kwa kawaida kwa Kiswahili tunasema kila kitu anachomiliki au kila kitu ambacho anamiliki twende katika mfano wa pili nadhani hiki ni kipengele rahisi zaidi kuliko hivi vingine ambavyo tumeviona hapo juu ambavyo vinahitaji umakini sana kwa sababu hapa upande wa kuongeza s2 sio shida namba 2 on number 2 example 2 he knows how to play a guitar He knows how to play a guitar. Kwa tunaona hapa hamna vile viashiria vya kuongeza es wala kubadilisha y kwenda ies. Kwa hiyo tunaenda moja kwa moja tunapachika s. He knows how to play a guitar. Anajua namna ya kucheza gitaa. Lakini kucheza gitaa sasa kwa kiswahili tunasema kupiga gitaa. Kuna wengine ambao wanasema kabisa kucheza gitaa kwa sababu to play inamaanisha kucheza kama vile ambavyo mchezaji mpira wa miguu anasema to play football na kadhalika kwa to play a guitar pia ni kucheza gitaa ambayo si tunasema kupiga gitaa. Kwa he knows how to play a guitar, anajua namna ya kupiga gitaa. He knows, she knows, I know ninajua. I know, I know how to play a guitar, ninajua 
namna ya kupiga gita lakini sisi pia hata ili haya maneno mawili how to hatu yetu mi nasema tunenajua kupiga gita i know how to play a guitar lakini kwa kiingereza lazima utasema namna ya ninajua namna ya kupiga japo kwa kiswahili tunajua tuna, tunasema ninajua kupiga twende katika mfano mwingine jambo pia la msingi ni kwamba hapa unaweza kutoa hii ukaweka jina au ukasema kwa mfano my friend knows my friend knows rafiki yangu anajua lakini ukiweka wingi itakuwa my friends sasa my friends inakuwa ni they kwa hiyo utasema my friends know my friend knows rafiki yangu anajua my friends know marafiki zangu wanajua twende namba tatu, mfano namba tatu, example 3 it helps me a lot it helps me inamaanisha inanisaidia kinanisaidia linanisaidia ananisaidia kama ni mnyama it helps me a lot a lot inamaanisha sana au it helps me so much inanisaidia sana kinanisaidia sana it helps me a lot inanisaidia sana au kinanisaidia sana helps kwa sababu hapa p hizo herufi mbili za mwisho hazina kiashiria chochote cha kuongeza es wala kubadisha y kwenda ies ndio sababu moja kwa moja tumepachika s it helps me a lot sasa twendeni na kipengele kinachofuata hiki pengele cha matumizi ya does na doesn't ambapo viajume vilewa vizuri basi hiki hapa pia kitakupa shida yote kwa sababu ni rahisi tu tuanze na mfano wa kwanza mfano wetu wa kwanza unasema hivi mfano wa kwanza ipo 1 huko hivi example 1 does she pay you well does she pay you well does she pay you well ambako pamoja na maanisha anakulipa vizuri au je yeye anakulipa vizuri lakini huyu anayekulipa ni wa kike does she pay you well kwa hiyo pale ambapo ukiwa kutumia kwa kawaida tulikuwa tumezoea kuna maswali ambayo ni do you kwa mfano do you pay me well unanilipa vizuri do you pay them well unawalipa vizuri lakini tunatoa do tunaweka does kwa upande wa he she na it na pale ilipokuwa you utatoa he she na it uh, uta, na pale ilipokuwa you utaitoa you utaweka he she na it au jina la kitu au mtu kwa mfano pay you well j j ni anakulipa vizuri kwa hiyo do isahau kwa upande wa he she na it weka does lakini pia you isahau kwa upande wa matumizi ya does utaweka he she na it Could does she pay you well majibu yake kwa jibu la yes litategemea umeelewa vipi vile vipengele vitatu vya, vya kuongeza s es na kubadisha y kwenda ies yes she pays me well yes she pays me well yes she pays me well lakini hapo utaangalia utaona kwamba kwenye jibu kuna pays kwenye swali kuna pay kwa hiyo ukitumia does kuuliza swali ili neno litabaki vile vile aliongezeki s wala alibadiliki chochote kama ni pay inabaki pay kama ni go inabaki go kwenye majibu ndipo utakapofanya mabadiliko kwa upande wa yes utasema hapa yes she goes yes she tries na kadhalika lakini kwa upande wa kuuliza swali jibu litabaki neno linabaki vile vile kama ambavyo liko katika hali yake ya kawaida kwa sababu it does tayari itatosha kuwakilisha kwamba kilichoitumika hapa ni hii she na it kwa kanuni ya kawaida lakini kwenye jibu pays ita, itasimama sasa kwa nafasi yake ya kile ambacho nilikuwa nakieleza katika hatua za awali Yes she pays me well ndio ananilipa vizuri Twende kwa upande wa no No she doesn't pay me well No she doesn't pay me well Kwa hiyo utaangalia ambapo does does imetumika na doesn't imetumika neno pay linabaki vile vile neno pay linabaki vile vile kama muungano um, does umetumia kuuliza swali lakini pia doesn't umetumia kujibu no she doesn't pay me well yes she pays me well yes she pays me well yes she pays me well no she doesn't pay me well kwa hiyo utakuwa makini kuangalia pale ambapo s au au es au 
mabadiliko yote yamefanyika na pale ambapo hayatakiwi kufanyika. Kitu kingine cha msingi cha kuzingatia ni kwamba don't ni kifupi cha do not. Kwa mfano I don't know you sikujui ni sawa na I do not know you. Kingi pia cha kuzingatia ni kwamba it doesn't ambayo umeiona hapa ni sawa sawa na does not. Kwa hiyo she doesn't pay me well ni sawa sawa na she does not pay me well. Maana ni ile ile doesn't ni mkusanyiko tu wa hayo maneno mawili kama ambavyo don't ni mkusanyiko wa hayo maneno mawili do na not do not. Twende mfano wetu wa pili. Hapa swala zima ni umakini tu kwa kila kitu ambacho tumekiona katika ile somo. Number two. Why does she want to run away from me? Why does she want to run away from me? Why does she want to run away from me? Ambo na manisha kwa nini anataka kunikimbia? Au kwa nini anataka kukimbilia mbali na mimi? To run kukimbia away na manisha mbali na ku, to run away from me ni kunikimbia au kukimbia mbali na mimi. Why does she? Utona hapa kuna does she? Tulikuwa tumezoea why do you? Why do you? Kwa hiyo pale do you? Does she? Does he? Does it? Ambo inakuwa does it? Kwa majibi yake ni kama kawaida tu ambavyo tuko naona e, yale ma, maswali ya do you yalivyokuwa najibika ndivyo hapa tunavyojibu tofauti tu ni pale kwenye do you tunacheza na does she na kwenye majibu yake na kuwa raba she he it kwa mfano jibu letu hapa ni she wants to run away from you because she is afraid of you she wants to run away from you because she's afraid of you ambayo na maanisha anataka kukukimbia kwa sababu anakuogopa kwa mfano nina kuogopa hapa she is itakuwa i am because i am afraid of you au i am afraid of you ninataka kwa mfano i want to run away from you ninataka kukimbia because i am afraid of you kwa sababu nina kuogopa kwa hiyo kwenye i am inakuwa she is au kama ni hii itakuwa he is kama ni it itakuwa it is she wants kutoka kwenye i want jibu lingine linaweza kuwa she doesn't want to run away from you she just wants to visit her friends she doesn't want to run away from you inayomaanisha hataki kukukimbia kama ambavyo ongeza kusema i don't want to run away from you sitaki kukukimbia she doesn't want to run away from you hataki kukukimbia yeye wa kike she just wants ambapo she wants anataka she just wants anataka tu to visit her friends kuwatembelea marafiki zake kwa hiyo she just wants to visit her friends anataka tu kuwatembelea marafiki zake she doesn't want to run away from you she just wants to visit her friends hataki kukukimbia anataka tu kuwatembelea marafiki zake twende mfano wetu wa tatu ambao pia ni wa mwisho katika kipengele hiki cha does na doesn't kwa sababu kama do you na i don't ulielewa vizuri hivi vipengele na sentensi zake hapa tu utacheza na mabadiliko madogo tu ya, ya ambayo tumeyaona katika hili somo number three, where does she live where does she live where does he live where does he live ina maanaisha anaishi wapi yeye wa kiume kama angekuwa wa kike tungesema where does she live anaishi wapi Utakumbuka where do you live inamaanisha unaishi wapi wewe unaishi wapi where do you live kwa hiyo do imetoka imekuwa does you imetoka imekuwa he where does he live anaishi wapi au je anaishi wapi au je yeye anaishi wapi na jibu linaweza kuwa kwa mfano he lives kwa hiyo he lives badala ya i live they live we live he lives he lives in the United States. He lives in the United States ambayo inamaanisha anaishi Marekani. He lives in the United States. Au utakumbuka kama kule tulivyoona he live uh, the US. Kongeza kusema he lives in the US kama ilivyo katika mabano. He lives in the US. He lives in the US. He lives in the US or he lives in the United States au unaweza kumalizia kabisa ukasema he lives in the United States of America. Anaishi Marekani 
au hii United pia unaweza kaitoa ukasema tu he lives in the states he lives in the states It, bado vile vile itamaanisha kwamba anaishi Marekani baada ya kuona haya yote nitarudi tena mwanzo nisome haraka haraka hizi sentensi kwa vipengele ili ujikumbushe tu kwamba kwa nini hapa ilikuwa ES kwa nini hapa imekuwa hivi na uone kama unakumbuka kwa nini tumeongeza hizo herufi au kwa nini pengine hatukuongeza labda tumeongeza ES tu au pengine hatukuweka kabisa chochote kama tulivyoona kwenye does na doesn't number one, she goes to his office every day number two, he does business 24/7 three, she washes or she does the dishes every morning number four, he teaches english on youtube five, he fixes broken computers six, it buzzes just like a bee seven, she misses a family so much kikipengele kingine number one, she always cries for no reason 2. He tries to do everything possible to help his son. Sometimes he prays for his son. 3. He flies to the US twice a month. Number 1. She loves you. That's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. Interudia number 1. She loves you. That's why she wants to tell you the truth about everything she owns. Number 2. He knows how to to play a guitar he knows how to play a guitar Three, it helps me a lot does she pay you well yes she pays me well no she doesn't pay me well don't so so na do not doesn't so so na does not number two. why does she want to run away from me from me why does she want to run away from me she wants to run away from you because she's afraid of you She doesn't want to run away from you. She just wants to visit her friends. Three. Where does he live? He lives in the United States. Oh, he lives in the US.